This EV Rider episode is brought to you by the historic Topoco Lodge, a Deals Gap, North Carolina, area tradition since 1930, that includes level two charging for guests with EVs. I'm thrilled to have finally made it up to Emoto Power Sports, and I'm gonna to get to take out this Zero SRS, which I'm really looking forward to. Austin Amaral and his partner recently opened the electric motorcycle rental business in Robbinsville, North Carolina, just minutes from the famous Tale of the Dragon after he fell in love with the area. I've been coming up here personally just for, for fun for five, six years now, since 2018, I believe was my first time and came up on my old Zero S. People were interested in the bikes. Every time we've come up here, half the time we can't leave on a ride because people are bombarding us with questions about bikes, what they do, how far they go on a charge, how they are to ride. So, you know, I'll ask them, are you like, do you want to ride it? And people just say no because they don't want to ride someone else's bike and risk damaging it. That told me that people would want to spend time on these and maybe pay for it. So over the years, I thought, you know, why not come up here, figure out a way to come rent these out? And finally built up enough to, to be able to make that happen. So now we have Emoto Power Sports. Something we really want to do is build out, uh, work with other businesses, lodging, restaurants, towns, anything that's an attractive destination for a rider to go. If they were on a Harley or a, any other gas bike, they would go to that town and have a place to charge on our bikes. So they can go stop for lunch, stop for dinner, go to a trail or do any activity they'd want to do normally, but there'd be a charger there. So we want to build out that infrastructure of charging networks. And that infrastructure is already pretty good with chargers at a number of area locations, including at the Dragon and Emoto Power Sports. Add to that the 120 miles or more per charge you'll get on mountain roads, and you don't need to worry about range. As I was driving a gas powered car that I didn't even have to pay for and buying a brand new zero motorcycle still came out cheaper than driving the car when all I was paying for was gas and insurance on the car. So I switched to electric motorcycles purely, well probably 80% for economical reasons and maybe 20% because I just wanted a motorcycle. I was looking for ways to you know, cut costs and have fun at the same time. So I stumbled upon zero motorcycles and ended up figuring out financially that I could buy one and save two, $300 a month relative to what I was spending in gas. And that includes the insurance and the payment on the zero. And if uh, you've been happy the whole time? Yes, I was very happy with my original zero. I put pretty much 80,000 miles on it and it paid for itself within three years in just gas savings by itself over the car. And what was your original zero, what model? I got the 2018 13 kilowatt hour battery pack S model. So I've run into an EV rider watcher. Rory Danner rode his Zero SRS all the way up from Atlanta when Austin told him EV rider was going to be stopping by the shop. I've watched a few episodes. In fact, I, I posted a link to one of your episodes. It was a double J kit. I posted a link to the double J kit review that you did. Rory was referring to an invention by Emoto Design that lets Zero Riders use two Level 2 chargers simultaneously to charge their Zeros up to twice as fast. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. The ride from Northwest Atlanta to Emoto Power Sports was roughly 145 miles. Well, my Zero, her name is Serena, uh, 2020 Zero SRS Premium with the power tank. Um, had it since new in 2020, put about 30,000 miles on it in three years. Uh, I've been riding motorcycles for almost 50 years now. This is my 30th motorcycle and, and the funnest one so far. So you would rank this above all 29 other motorcycles you've owned? Overall, I would rank it above every motorcycle I've owned. And why? Um, the biggest reason is simplicity for me. I didn't go electric for the environment or for the torque or for a lot of things that attract other riders and they're all true. Um, but I just love that I've had the bike for three years, 30,000 miles, and the only maintenance I've done is tires. And every day I get up, I go down to the garage, I have a full tank, it's ready to go. For people that uh, are thinking about renting a bike from you guys, run down the procedure. So you can either, um, the easiest way is to book online on our website at 
emotousa.com, and we've got all the information you'd want to know about our bikes on there, and more straightforwardly, all right on the home page, you input your date you want to pick up, the time you want to drop it off, and whether you want delivery or pick it up at our shop in Robbinsville, and you check which bikes are available, and select your bike, and fill out your personal information and your card information, and you're good to go. And what's Emoto's season run? If March seems to be a bit warm and we have interest, we'll be up here in March. Guaranteed, November 1st until April 1st is the off season. We'll be here available for walk-in April 1st until um, October 31st. You can't beat riding on an electric motorcycle, especially up here in the mountains, where that regen just slows you down as you go into the curves and that endless torque when you hit the throttle pulls you right back out. I'm telling you, it's a wonderful experience and it really just sets the bar for motorcycle riding. Any unfamiliar road is difficult for a new rider. So I was a fairly new rider when I came up here at first and it was very easy to get used to the road because that's all I had to pay attention to. From a skill perspective, all I had to do was pay attention to the curves. I didn't have to worry about my speed. I didn't have to worry about RPMs of an engine or what gear I was in because the gas bike has many more variables for you know, how you come into the turn and what gear you're in, how you're braking versus how you're using the clutch and how you're accelerating out of you know, certain gears. The only problem with riding an electric motorcycle up here is the time goes by too fast. Seems like I just got up just oh a couple minutes ago and already it's late afternoon. It's been an outstanding day and I can't thank Austin and the folks at eMoto Power Sports enough. I'll tell you this is a first class operation and if you're a motorcyclist you're gonna love what they've got to offer and if you're a gas motorcyclist it's time to give an EV a try. It's a great way to Step into it, see if you like it. If you don't, that's okay too, but I'm telling you, once you try it, you're gonna be hooked. And speaking of hooked, Austin picks up the story of a recent gas customer's first DV motorcycling experience. He rides a motorcycle, he's got various types and very experienced, been riding for decades. He figured he'd take the DSRX, which is a dual sport adventure bike, similar to an R1200 BMW. He took that on one of his favorite local routes, about 105 miles round trip, and he said it was the best ride he's ever had on that road. And he's been riding that road for, I think he's been living here for 13 years. I've had a wonderful time riding these Zeros and Energicas today. And I'll tell you, if you're looking for a place to stay up here at the Tail of the Dragon, the Topoco Lodge where we're at now, it is beautiful. The setting is stupendous, the food is great, and I can say that as somebody who stayed here for the very first time. If you've enjoyed this episode of EV Rider, please give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can continue to bring you more adventures in EV motorcycling. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.